Lesson 2.3 Glycerin Rivers and Soda Ash Two more soaping terms you will come across in your craft are glycerin rivers and soda ash, so let's cover these terms and learn how to deal with them. Glycerin rivers, sometimes called crackle, they're a visual effect in colored sections of a bar of soap that look like a crackle or a fractured color change. They do not harm or affect the quality of your soap. These are distinctive striations in your design that can look like little rivers. Now there is a whole science behind this, but most commonly, soapers just want to know how to control this effect. Typically, this will happen with certain color pigments like ultramarine blues and titanium dioxide. And it happens when the soap is going through the gel phase and becoming hotter. During the chemical reaction that's happening, water will pool together in some places in the bar in different densities. Since glycerin is a byproduct of soap, it's also being formed in different densities and this crackle look is created. The short remedy for this is to give your recipe a water discount. Use 10% less water, make sure your colorants are mixed well, and pour the batter at a slightly thinner trace. You may need to practice this a few times before you get the hang of controlling your glycerin rivers, but with a little practice, it will work. Soda ash. Soda ash is an effect on the surface of your soaps when some of the lye hasn't been saponified and it reacts with the carbon dioxide in the air. That can occur over the time of the curing process or it can take several weeks. This can be tricky because there could be a few reasons why your soaps can ash. The most obvious reason is that your lye wasn't mixed well enough or you have just a bit too much lye in your recipe. These are easy remedies that can be fixed by mixing or measuring more carefully. Another reason can be the humidity in the room during the curing process. If you followed your recipe correctly and you seem to have a chronic problem with soda ash, then try putting a dehumidifier into the room or try curing in a place that's more dry. If you're still having a problem that doesn't feel identifiable to you, then you can take some preventative measures to keep the ash from forming that might be helpful. First, before you set your batter aside to cure, spray the top with 99% isopropyl rubbing alcohol. Also, place a flat piece of cardboard over the top of the mold as it is setting up. This will minimize the contact with the air while your batter is becoming harder. You can do this too during the curing process by placing the bars just a half an inch from each other and placing a piece of cardboard on top of them. Don't let the curing bars touch each other. You want them to be able to breathe and allow the water to evaporate. If this is still a problem, try working with a little bit less water in your recipe. Reduce the water in the recipe by only 10%. This is best if your oils are soft. It might not be possible if you're working with hard oils. So if you do have soda ash, how do you get rid of it? The first thing to know is that soda ash does not affect the quality of your soap. So does it bother you enough to do anything? It's only cosmetic. If the answer is yes, then put on a pair of gloves and wash your bars. Rub the surfaces until that thin layer of ash comes off. That's pretty easy. If you don't want to lather up, then just wet a paper towel and use that as a rub. Finally, if you have too many bars to clean off individually, you can steam them off. A handheld clothing steamer is just the thing for the job. If you aren't sure about what kind of outcome you can get with one of these, you can use the steam from your teapot, hold it over the hot water stream for just a minute and rub the humidity across the bar. This may also be helpful in removing your soda ash.